what's that doing? Oh, it's showing me all the repository blocks. Let's try it again. All right. So here I can see all the f all the files. Um, I can click on. the file that I have here and I can show the log for this file. The log for the file actually shows me um, all the revisions that's happened with it. Um, this is a special window. You'll see this window also when we do the merge but uh, here's the latest version. This means that there was a change to a file. Down here tells me what the file was that was changed and this is my comment that I had whenever I submitted it. And I can actually go through all these. Uh, you notice down here there's one that's not gray and everything else is gray. I right clicked on the mail, mail, mailer configuration file and said show me the log on this file. It's going to show me everything but specifically it's going to uh, disable everything except for the one file I was looking for. You also see that with the directories whenever you merge. So this is a really good tool because it, it can show you different, different revisions uh, of, of your branch and uh, what was changed in it. Any questions? If you have any questions about this screen, Geary is a pro at it. All right, so now we've finished doing our email no notification and we need to merge it. Um, just as a side note, we also have used an integration branch uh, before so that we can have a central point to integrate just to, and instead of just keep merging so that it constantly merges the integration branch until we get to a specific milestone and then we'll merge that integration branch to the top. You can do that as well. Um, that's 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 all good and well, just make sure if you use the integration branch, all other branches that you're working on that you're going to integrate to the integration branch, you mer you branch off from the integration branch itself. Um, that's going to save you a lot of headaches whenever you do uh, merge or whenever you reintegrate everything. If you do cross-branch uh, merges and then you try to reintegrate that into your integration branch, you're going to get con conflicts out of that as well. Tree conflicts. Tree conflicts are a pain to deal with. Uh, you basically have to go in and, and resolve them. What a tree conflict is, it's basically a change in the repository directory structure itself or files that have been added or removed. So I checked out a version of, um, the, of this branch, you checked out a version of this branch, and then um, you made some changes and checked it in, and then I made some changes, like I added files and deleted directories and stuff like that, and then whenever I try to check it in, that's called a tree conflict because the directory structure itself has changed between the versions of whenever you got it and I got it. And so um, cross-branch merging doesn't necessarily mean that's going to happen, but it, uh, in my experience, is it leads to it more easily, which is kind of a pain to deal with. So anyways, I'm going to do a merge right quick. We're going to merge my changes from that branch into here. Um, another good reason why you want to do your design with um, just a couple of components and set up your repository structure that way is so that you don't step on each other's feet. So if I, if uh, Siddharth just got finished done with uh, email notification and I need to merge his stuff in, I don't want to have to merge the whole repository. I just need to go to the stuff that he was supposed to modify. Uh, that also lets us catch people going into the data access, the, the DAL and uh, making changes there whenever the changes weren't authorized because that could lead to a developer changing a query to meet his needs, so the query was designed for a general need that is used plenty of other places, blah, 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 blah. So this actually lets you control your code if you have loosely coupled, thank you. It's just th that's what I've been saying. I've been using the, the other word the whole time. Um, these loosely coupled components so that you can merge just the component that he was supposed to work on. So uh, here I come into email notification. I want to merge just email notification because that's the whole thing. Um, so we come here, we go to tool set, tool dash S U N, and believe it or not, there's an actual little merge. Come to merge. There's several different merges. I'm not going to go into all the details about all of them. In fact, I'm only going to talk merge about merged or range of revisions. Uh, if you go to figris.ssubvision.org, you can get the S U N book. S U N .figris.org, you can get the S U N book, which explains all of this good stuff. Anyways, I'm going to do a, a quick merge. Um, here's here's where I select where I want to merge from. So I select the branch I was at. Come here. This is our repository browser again. So I come into email notification. Notice I'm already in the email notification um, directory within my source. 
so I don't want to just merge this. I want to go into the email notification directory and merge that directly. So here, I'll show you the log just so I can verify what I need to merge. This will show me all the changes that have been merged, uh, have been made throughout the life of that branch. So I would come in here and uh, determine are all these the files that I need changed? What was everything checked in? Is everything good? Okay, I can either select just a couple, you know, range of revisions, or I can select them all. And by selecting them all, I can just delete out this field, and this will go from one to head. And test merge is a good tool because it'll tell you if you're going to have any conflicts in merging. You'd get a conflict in merging if you, um, if the uh, version in your trunk was the same version, let's see, was the same version that you branched off with, but then you changed your version in the trunk, and then you're trying to merge changes in from that branch that you just branched off in. You'll get those, the conflicts there. Generally, you shouldn't do that if you merge based on these loosely coupled components. So all this is organized to make your life easier on how you organize your repository so you reduce conflicts wherever possible. Um, and so test merge is fine. Come back in here, and I actually did the merge. Select the version where I created created the branch, which is which is 28, and merge it all the way through. So head with the 30. the branch to the trunk. So here we, have, here we have a complete conflict. I don't remember how I did the branch and when I did the notification. So basically it's saying that the two conflicts exist in the addition of these files and uh, then these are the updates that come after the two conflicts. So when I was doing the merge before, I wasn't getting it because there was a two conflict that blocked it. So if I come back here, I have to actually go through and fix these, these two conflicts. All I care about is this one right here, so let me do it right here. Let me do it like really quick. Uh, Alright, now that I fixed the two conflicts, I'm gonna actually get into the merge. I'm just gonna ignore everything else.
education and stuff, you know. So I thought it would just confuse everybody even more. But basically, I'm working on a local copy here. So whenever you're doing Rails, you're working on a local copy. Before you commit and finish the actual integration or the merging into the test, you'll rerun your test and everything else. So I'm going to say that email notification is done. Commit it. Yay. Yay. These commands aren't working. Let's see. And that completes a merge. So, have I confused you or uh, do you all understand the version? This is really meant for people like David who's not here.